STEM stories from this reviewing. Today we're going to talk about something um, a little bit less of a project or a challenge and more of it's a material that you could be using with the challenges that we've been doing. Um, and this is a material that you may have around your house, but it's actually one that we can easily make. And what I like about this is we can make it, <coughs> excuse me, any color that you like. And what I'm talking about is making your own Play-Doh, specifically no-cook Play-Doh. There are a lot of recipes that you can find out on the internet that require cooking, but this is a no-cook Play-Doh recipe, mainly because I work with uh, elementary school kids, and I wanted to create something that was safer for them to do. Uh, make sure, though, we're doing this with an adult. The recipe does, do, does call for some hot water, um, so you want to make sure that an adult is around and helping you out. So Play-Doh, I mean, can't get any easier than this, and you can make it any possible color you want, as long as you've got some variety of food coloring, and you can always mix them. So what we need is two cups of flour, all-purpose baking uh, flour, anything will work, um, as long as it is two cups and basic flour. Now we're going to need three quarters of a cup, of salt and this has to be a fine kind of table salt um, coarse ground salt oh we use it for a lot of baking will not work with this this has to be fine salt so three quarters of a cup of that um, we're gonna need two tablespoons of cream of tartar make sure when you're doing these measurements tablespoon is very different than a teaspoon this is two tablespoons of cream of tartar you can find cream of tartar in your spice section in almost every grocery store out there it's pretty easy to grab and get your get a hold of this is where I need for you to work with an adult you're gonna need two cups of hot water um, best if you had some boiling water but you can actually use the hottest water you can get out of your tap. Let the tap run for a while on hot, and then you need two cups of that. So this is make sure that you're using an adult to do this part of it. And you're also gonna need two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Um, any type of vegetable oil will work. Try, don't use olive oil. Olive oil will tend to spoil and go rancid, and you'll have to throw your Play-Doh out. Now, here's a very specific, important trick. If you put the food coloring in the water before you mix it in with your flour and your dry goods, it's actually much easier to color your Play-Doh and get a consistent color and less mess on your hands. So put the color in the water first, um, which is super important. So the first thing you wanna do is take your flour, your salt, and your cream of tartar, throw it in a mixing bowl, and use a spatula to kind of mix it and blend it all up and get it really, really mixed up well, that's gonna really be important to the success of your Play-Doh. Then you're gonna take your colored water, hot, 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 and your olive or your vegetable oil. Put your vegetable oil in with the hot water as well, stir it around, and then slowly pour your water mixture into the flour salt mixture and stirring as you go along. Now it's going to get to a point where you're going to have to actually use your hands to knead it. If you're worried about staining your hands, make sure you wear some gloves, some rubber gloves. Um, if you're using food coloring, if you do stain your hands, you can scrub them. They're probably going to be stained for a couple days. It's food coloring. It's not going to bother you unless you have an allergy to it. So make sure that you're using some sort of glove. Now, that's it. You've added your color, water, and your oil. You mix it up, and you have done it. Now, here's my suggestion to you. Make one batch at a time, one color at a time. Don't try to do too much at once. And you know what? Mix your colors. Remember, if you only have the four primary or the three primaries, you can mix those to create other colors. And you can always brighten things with a little bit of yellow. Like your, if you take your green and mix it with yellow, be great makes it a brighter brighter green your red and your yellow it makes great oranges purple is a little tough to do but you know with all the new cake uh, decorating stuff that's out there there's a lot new colors uh, a lot more than when I was a little kid we had very basic colors and they have some really cool colors now so you can make some really cool play-dohs but always remember have fun Mr. Ewing wants you to be having fun while you're learning. Please know that your Play-Doh will stick. It will be pretty good for about six months, give or take. 
Uh, really depends on how you store it. Put it in a baggie when you're not using it or in a, a container that has a sealed lid where you can push a little of the air out of it might work. Uh, putting it in the refrigerator though, if you do refrigerate it, you're going to have to work with it when you pull it out of the refrigerator while it's cold to warm it up to make it actually work really well. Now remember, always be safe while making your own Play-Doh. Just because we're using materials out of our kitchen does not mean that you can eat this. Please, please, please do not eat this. And with using the hot water, have an adult help you. But go and make some homemade Play-Doh. Um, it's going to be a lot cheaper than buying it out of the store. But if you have stuff from the store, you know what, you can use that too. But this way you can make the colors that you want to create. Uh, can't wait to see what you can do with it. Have some fun.